Vox Allotype 3090A Twin Tourer 1925. This is a most handsome example of what is considered by many knowledgeable enthusiasts to be the finest British sporting car of the vintage period. Vauxhall 3098 adherents will maintain that while Bentley generated greater publicity, thanks largely to their victories at Le Mans, the Vauxhall Company, which raced at both Grand Prix and Tourist Trophy level before the Great War, had produced a car which could run rings around 3-liter Bentleys on cross-country journeys. The big engine, lightweight car formula has been repeated to good effect many times throughout the history of the sporting motor car, and Vauxhall's famous 3098 was one of its earliest successful applications. As has so often been the case, the spur behind this particular combination was the desire for competition success, the first 3098 being constructed in 1913 at the behest of car dealer and motorsport competitor, Joseph Higginson. Higginson's first objective was victory in the Chelsea Walsh Hill climb in June of that year, and the Lawrence Bomber or Design 3098 duly obliged, setting a hill record in the process which was to stand for 15 years. Lawrence Bomeroy's tenure as Vauxhall's chief engineer saw the Luton-based concern produce some of the truly outstanding designs of the Edwardian period, commencing with the 20-horsepower Prince Henry in 1910. A larger version of the Prince Henry's four-cylinder side valve engine was developed for its successor, the D-Type, which, with some 70 bhp on tap, was good for 70 miles per hour plus when not overburdened by formal coachwork. Pomeroy's 3098 was powered by a 4.5-liter, four-cylinder, side valve engine, in effect a stretched version of the Prince Henry slash D-types, mounted in a conventional but lightweight chassis, suspension being by beam axle at the front and live axle at the rear, with semi-elliptic springs all round. Power was transmitted via a multi-plate clutch to a robust four-speed gearbox, and thence via a short prop shaft to the straight-cut bevel rear axle. The braking system consisted of a foot-operated transmission brake and a handbrake operating on the two rear drums, the front wheels being unbraked. At first glance this unremarkable specification seems an unlikely one for a performance car, even an Edwardian example, but the 3098's 90 bhp plus power output, combined with a weight of only 2400 weight, with the factory built, 4-seater Velox Tourer coachwork, gave it a formidable power to weight ratio for the time. A fully road equipped 3098 was capable of around 85 miles per hour and when stripped for racing the company guaranteed a top speed in excess of 100 miles per hour for the later overhead valve models, a capability demonstrated at Brooklands on numerous occasions. Only a handful of cars were sold before the outbreak of WWI interrupted production, and when manufacture resumed in 1919, the model was given the designation E-Type, its Prince Henry predecessor having been the C and the 25 horsepower Tourer the D. Manufacture of the E-Type ceased in September 1922 after 287 cars had been constructed, there then being a slight hiatus in production before its successor, the overhead Valvo, commenced delivery to customers in early 1923. Despite a reduction in capacity to 4.2 liters, the power of the OHV motor went up to 110 bhp plus, although this increase made little difference to the car's performance. The O was not to gain front wheel brakes until late 1923, when a cable system was introduced. This was operated, along with the transmission brake, by the foot pedal, with the linkages and compensating mechanism, the inaccurately termed kidney box, mounted somewhat untidily in front of the radiator. Hydraulic actuation of the front wheel and transmission brakes was adopted in 1926. By the time the final batch of O chassis had been completed in early 1927, there were few customers for the 3098, the antiquity of the design telling against it when compared to the more refined competition from Bentley and Sunbeam. Total production of O's numbered 312 cars, many of which were exported to Australia like that offered here. This car, chassis number O E162 was acquired in Australia in the early 1960s by noted Vauxhall enthusiast, Ron House. The original OE-162 had been crashed in the 1950s, the chassis being scrapped, while the remaining components were sourced and purchased by Ron, 
who then set about transforming it into his ideal car, a 3098 Windham. Pinnacle of 3098 production, the Windham featured a boat styled ultra sporting body, a type much in vogue during the early 1920s, and took its name from the eponymous Norfolk River where works manager A.J. Hancock kept a fast motor boat. Records show that only 11 Winchums were built in Vauxhall's repair and racing shop between 1924 and 1927, and they proved outstandingly successful in competitions at both Brooklands and Chelsea Walsh.